go. Somebody's got their audio on. It's Kill me. that shit. Sorry, it was my Kill phone. Kill it. Kill that it. Was, that was my phone. Kill it. Kill it, dead. Phil was Phil here. Was fire. This is this is the first episode of Call to Contempt that's ever uh, uh, across the internet. I guess we have Jordan on the on the left and Brian on the right. And uh, Phil Phil will be here. He was just here, but he's gonna come back on his computer. And uh, I'm Paul Mall. And this is Call to Contempt. And everything is completely normal outside. Nothing weird yeah, is happening. Completely. Completely Nothing. normal. No, nobody's lives have been affected whatsoever. Nah, just business as usual. Yeah. Nah, it's, it's been a real strange gentleman. It certainly has. Very, it certainly has. Very. Well, uh, uh, Jordan and I actually work for what are considered essential businesses. So, Jordan, has your have you been working this entire... Uh, I have, up until yesterday, I, I had enough. I uh, said, uh, put me up for two weeks vacation. It's getting a little too weird in there. Yeah. Too I'm risky. too old for Get this shit. Well, yeah, that, it's just getting a little too weird. So um, so now I get to enjoy uh, some time at home. But yeah, up until yesterday, it's been uh, quite real, for sure. Yeah, uh, the company I work for, um, you know, we sell parts and necessary components to, um, you know, uh, manufacturers that make power generators and hospital equipment, fire protection. So it's like by by default, we're kind of um, an essential business too. So I've kind of been working this whole this whole fiasco as well. Um, although they have a split into two groups. That's so good. It, so it's like twelve people work three days a week and then the other 12 work the other uh, Monday through Saturday right there he is so. Phil headphone up bud what's up bitches yo yo headphone up bud headphones okay hold on one second it's we Phil what up? We, we are so prepared here for the apocalypse <laughs> <laughs> headphones but motherfuckers yeah we're, yeah we're essential bro yeah. You guys are essential. I never, I've never felt more essential in my yeah, life. Yeah, tell me about so it. So are you telecommuting now while you work, or you're you're going to work still? Um, yeah, uh, heading into the office. You Until go physically? Notice. Holy shit, Jesus Christ. You, that's that's insane, man. Yeah, no, it's... Uh... I guess you got to do what we got to do. How so. far? How far away from it, it? You know, your house is it? And like, uh, how many people oh, do you do you deal with during the day? I work in an office, um, and the company is very small. It's like twenty-five people, um, so I don't deal with a whole lot of. I don't really deal with the public very much, which is kind of nice. Uh, which, you know, I wouldn't want to deal with the public on a, on a good day. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, yeah. That but was yeah, there, there's very there's very little walk-ins, um, so I I deal with the same twenty four other people all the time, and now it's even more of a skeleton crew than before. I'm uh, I'm not I'm not terribly worried. Um, yeah, you just gotta be careful. Use that oh, yeah. hand sanitizer. Wash your hands all the time. You know, for twenty seconds, you got to sing a song. What song do you guys sing? I was doing the Happy Birthday because that was the first one I saw. But then I see all these different variations. I got to try a few out. Actually, come to think of it. Mm. How about Lunar Lupines? By <laughs> we'd be there for thirty all minutes. Still, turn minutes your mic up if you can. <laughs> Yeah, right, Mitch. Okay, still washing. Still That's washing. Guitar you, solo, still you, washing. You have no hands by, by minute 12. Or just come back with your phone, I guess, with your headphones on. I don't know. If I could be frank, I'm uh, sorry to Phil be is frozen. Yeah. Bert, it's an interesting show. This is this is new ground. The kids are learning digitally. I think we're going to have, like, uh, drills where they learn from home for, like, three days. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, he's gone. Phil has left the meeting. He's coming back. He'll be back. He always comes back. No, but kids are, back. kids are going to be, like, learning from home. Like, this is going to be the new thing of, like, uh, you know, oh, we're going to have a drill so that we can teach the kids to learn from home. It's going to be, like, three days. They're not going to have snow days no more. Yeah, right? Think about that. It's yeah. done. It's yeah, fine. Yeah, they kind of don't have snow days in, like, Vermont 
Yeah, it's like uh, we're going. Yeah. Yeah, because it's just it, there's just always three feet of snow, like yeah. all pretty much all year round. So it's like places like Vermont, they look at like New Jersey. It's like you guys get off when it snows. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, they don't get it at all. Or like Canada, you know. Like, yeah, uh, Minnesota. I think oh, yeah, my parents got first. Maine, uh, got snow up in Maine this week. Like, I'm pretty sure oh, they got. Oh, they live in Maine. Cool. Yeah, they get they get terrible weather all the time. It's like the fucking shining up there. Yeah, it really is. <laughs> <laughs> you just get frozen like that all the time. I thought about going to visit them, and then I thought about the shining, and I stayed home during all this. <laughs> yeah. So like, ah, I could work from here. I could work from up there, or wherever. Like, nah, I'll just stay <laughs> here. Dan Watts loved Maine. The guy from End of Zombie, my old band, his family, yeah. they yeah. loved Maine. They moved yeah. up there, didn't they? Yeah, he moved up there. He loved it yeah. so much. Do you yeah. know which part of Maine? Uh, it was... What's the one... Ca- what's the capital of Maine? Portland? Does anyone I know? Yeah, Portland. Okay, <laughs> yeah, yeah, so it's, it's either in Portland or right outside of Portland. Yeah, that's where he's at. That's like where my parents are. That's a, that's a cool area. Portland's yeah, like a hip little it. city. He's into, like, he's a real outdoors guy, so it's like mm. he's always kayaking and mountain biking and hiking and shit. Like, that's what he so loves. That, yeah, that's the place for him, though. Here yeah, he, he comes to save the day. Ha-ha. <laughs> Where'd he Philip. go? Oh, he went away. Philip, Philip, oh, pretend to All us. right, look. Thanks, guys. I am back, but uh, my phone doesn't have an earphone jack, so it's kind of fucked. Oh, so iPhone 7? That's all right. Just talk. No, it's a than Pixel all Three, us. actually. Uh, Fancy. Pixel. I have the one, yeah. I, I have the one right before they started doing the no phone jack thing. So. Yeah, my jacks. my phone doesn't have that shit. I have like the special. I don't know. It's the thunder. The dongle. I don't yeah. even have a dongle. I just have like this thing I can plug headphones that have this stupid ass plug on the oh, end of it. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> dongle. Gotcha. I know. Fucking I love that word. Stupid ass oh, Apple. No. Don't take your shitty. dongle out in public, though. That's what I'm saying. You got your dongle? Let me play your dongle. Yeah, don't fuck <laughs> Please, with Please, there dongle. are women present. Come on. <laughs> I like to dangle my dongle as much as possible. <laughs> <laughs> dongle. That's what it's all about. You guys look like the fucking... The dongle. You guys look like the Brady Bunch up there, all stacked on top of each other. Yeah, that's who we are right here. And out, and out. Phil, can you look down longingly while you two look up? Yeah, oh, that's beautiful. <laughs> Uh, hey, uh, everybody. It, it's the white jersey guy bunch. Right? <laughs> <laughs> at least one of these four people have buried a body at some point. Yeah. Of course. I mean, <clears> two of these now. four people. Oh, wait a minute. Okay. <laughs> wait a minute. okay. <laughs> we don't talk about that anymore. No. Uh, I don't like... know about you guys, but uh, I uh, this whole thing has, has been crazy, and uh, I spent like like an hour trying to order tacos from three different restaurants. One of them was closed. <laughs> one of them wasn't delivering and said, fuck you. And then the third one finally got here and the show starts. And then I got to go through all this shit to get on here. But what was more interesting than that is I actually had to go uh, research commando style, go into the city yesterday with a that, coworker yeah. of mine. And we were dressed up like fucking EMT guys. And uh, like I'm lathering up with sanitizer, like like I'm about to fucking go to town on some HIV, you know, infested monster or something. Bro, you look and, like Scorpion uh, from Mortal Kombat. That guy. Yeah. And we go into the city, and it is empty. <laughs> it is eerily quiet. It's just yeah. fucking. There was no cars on Park Avenue. That's um, very few people out. It was fucking scary, dude. And I put yeah. some pictures up on Facebook I don't, and, and Instagram. I don't know if you guys I saw, saw that. that. Yeah, I did see that. Yeah, that was good shit. Scary yeah. shit. So, <laughs> yeah, fucking shit is real, man. This is fucking crazy. Like, the times we're living in, we got all this modern technology, and it's like we're back to fucking medieval times and shit, like square one. Like, what's going on here? I yeah, needed my Mexican. crucial database for my writings, <laughs> my scientific writings. Yeah, it's like escape from New York, escape into New York. I must get the data. Right. Did they yeah. even charge you to get in? <laughs> yeah, man, but uh, there's no toll collectors on the on the parkway or anywhere anymore. Really? Wow. 
Wow. They'll mail you a fucking bill yeah, if you don't. Man. Yeah. Yeah, because I don't yeah. have easy pads, so yeah. Wow, they'll mail it to That's you. That's what I'm yeah. talking about. Let's That's go down the shore, boys. Oh, That's yeah. Hap That's happened to me before. I've gotten a ticket in the mail. Oh, yeah. Like, <laughs> no, easy pass. I'm like, what the fuck is this? Come on. <laughs> they'll always find you. Yeah. yeah, they're they're savages, Easy Pass, and they're upping the tolls again. They're gonna make yeah, it even that. more money. Oh, they're That's... never gonna go down. Yeah. No, no, they'll First never go all, down. What? Those tolls were to pay for that highway. That's paid yeah, for that they, highway a hundred times over. Yeah, but yeah. it's it's for the maintenance, Phil. Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> they have to do the maintenance. The maintenance of who? Fucking some guys gambling debts. What is the maintenance? I don't hey, know. Listen. <laughs> No, oh, they, baby. Yeah, they gotta fill the potholes. That's what they should do while nobody's driving around is fill all the fucking potholes in. Like That's the guy's right. filling the potholes. That oh, that was a meme? That's even better. Yes. Someone's <laughs> yeah. like, yeah, it's like, well, no one's driving. Fix no, all yeah. the fucking roads. <laughs> like, yeah. You got a point there. New, new blacktop all around. Yeah. I'm down. <laughs> I had an exhilarating Saturday where it's like, ah, we're quarantined, we're all stuck here. Let's fucking fire up the leaf blower outside and uh, <laughs> blow no, some. I feel you. Oh, I I I'm hate. I'm gonna be doing some yard work myself, so. <laughs> yeah, I, I live in an apartment though. I I don't want to hear that at eight o'clock in the morning on a Saturday. No, yeah, f yeah, fuck that. After quarantine, ugh. So you guys, uh, Jordan, now you're not gonna leave the house or what? You're gonna go out. Party no, I'm fucking staying put, man. Like, yeah, I mean, because like I said, I was working with the public for the past two weeks, and it was a fucking harrowing experience, let me tell yeah. you. So it's like, I, I was just like, nah, that's enough, enough for me. I'll take two weeks vacation. Thank you very much. Because it's it's just too weird. Because you can't, uh, it's it's like going to war every day. That's what it felt like. It was like being in World War Two or something. Yeah, being like, in the trenches. With my job, it's a little different because I, I, yeah, I only see like, like I said, the same twenty plus people. Like you, you see hundreds. Th of people Dude, last a day. week I was surrounded by thousands of fucking yeah. people. Yeah, thousands. Yeah. And it of them. grew exponentially, I'm sure. Oh. Yeah, thousands. And I said, look, if even one of these motherfuckers have it, it's over. I'm like, yeah. it's like, and, and and the thing was, it was like the weirdest part about it was, there was like this obvious panic in the air. But, like, most of the people were pretending that they weren't, which made it even weirder. Yeah. They're like, oh, yeah, this is crazy. Because you, can tell, when, you can tell when people are scared or nervous. Dude, but... yeah, and it's like when you're in a sea of that, it's fucking catching. Like, it's like the first day, like, the, like maybe it was like, I don't know, like last Tuesday or something. Once the Prez went on TV and started Wait, what do you too. do, man? Well, I did work for two tech companies. I got laid off from that. Actually, I was an early adopter. I was laid off in February because of this coronavirus. Because, Holy shit. Because we get our stuff from China. So uh -oh. our supplies, like one of them was a Chinese company and the other ones are made here, but the main Chinese company financed the other two operations. So the, China was closed for, for three months. There goes so the it's neighborhood. Like, well, so it's like, I told people I was laid off because of the coronavirus. They're like, what the fuck are you talking about? Oh, a month and a half later, half the world's laid off because of the fucking coronavirus. And then yeah. I also work in a grocery store. So I have now become the most essential worker on planet Earth outside of fucking healthcare workers. Jesus. So it was, it became like this whole crazy thing where it's like, you know, you go into work every day. And like I said, the, the amount of people was just astronomical because people are freaking out. But then you mix in this whole, you know, just spread of the shit in the town that I work in there's at least six cases now and it's like you know you gotta be near people you can't you know the six feet rule yeah that don't fucking work and then it, even if it did because now people were starting to stay away because the cases were climbing in my yeah. town yeah, then it's always... like you can't get away from your co-workers so it's right. like that that was my real fear was it's like okay even if I can Keep my distance from these people these people it's impossible and if one of them get it we're all gonna get it oh, yeah. so, and so i'm like nope sorry goodbye Two yeah, you can't vacation. always adhere to that six foot rule like, no it's impossible bro. it's impossible yeah like even like me and my wife you know like we live in the same house like, yeah and it's like there's certain corners within the house with it's it's not gonna be six feet between us so no it's, 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 it's like what, what it's impossible it's like, yeah yeah, it's no, like, it's, where, it's, whereas we normally hug and kiss, now it's like, hi, how are you? Yeah, no. <laughs> it's, it's, 
Jordan, may I thank you for your service and please just put the Charmin on the side for me and I'll come pick it up later, bro. Bro, you know how, how many don't people. Lean on the Charmin. Like, dude, it's, it's like being a, <laughs> in a, like a sci fi movie. Like, I feel like I'm in like Children of Men every day. Because, like, right? it's like the things that you just like could go get, you just can't get anymore. And, like, I had access to deliveries because I bring in stuff off the trucks. And so I'd be like, oh, I see that. That's for me. That's for me. <laughs> you know, it's like, or it's like, but yeah, it's just, it, it, it was a very, very nerve wracking experience, to say the least. Well, I'm, I'm glad you, uh, I'm glad you had the sense to take off. No, I had that, to. That, that was, that was one of the things on my mind. I was like, Jordan works at shop. Yeah, no, it, it, it sure. became too much. Um, it just, and yeah, because, like, yeah, just some, like I said, certain people started disappearing, and they're like, oh, they're fucking <laughs> quarantining, and they won't tell me why. Yeah. And I'm like, I just stood next to you for the past a fucking week and a half. I'm like, yeah, no, no, no. And the, yeah, they're probably, like, privacy things, so they probably No, but it's like, it may not even that. been, like, it may just be, I mean, who knows, but like, it wasn't from the company. It's just like, you just, like, well, this guy's quarantined, so, uh, yeah, no, bye-bye, done. Yeah, that's crazy. That was the smart move. No, it's just, it was just too, like, it was, it was very, very stressful. <laughs> so let me tell you that my, my girlfriend works in a hospital, and it's like, um, they have one in uh, Hackenstown, and uh, this lady was like 49 years old and stuff like that, in perfect health, and now she's on a ventilator. So some people oh. get it bad. And then another friend of mine, John, got it. He had a very mild case. He had hardly any symptoms, but he lost the sense of smell. That's where I heard so that he's, recently. Yeah. He's That's just sick. getting his sense of smell back now, and he said he he can't taste everything, but he could taste spicy and he can taste salty, but he can't taste sweet yet. Weird. That's fucked up, man. That's weird. Yeah. That is weird. See, Dude, that's not had... a good. That wouldn't be a good indicator for me because I have a poor sense of smell anyway. <laughs> huh? so, so, like, I I don't know. That that just wouldn't be like an indicator for me. Yeah. Right. Um, I had a thought about uh, the guy from Tech 21, Lloyd, that passed yeah. away. He was like the head guy at Tech 21. I bet you they get all their components from China. I guarantee Most you, man. And, like I said. And that guy, he it was weird. When I met him, he was like so weird about like, oh, I'm not shaking your hand. Nam's coming up and I yeah, don't want to get sick. Yeah, dude, I was there. I saw him there. The Nam flu and this and that. And dude, that guy got sick and fucking died like two days later. Yeah. Just out of Damn nowhere. Fuck. I mean, he was an older guy, but it's like, ah, uh, you know, that's, and I, I, I would be willing to bet you they get some of their shit from China. Like, I'm sure I, he could have gotten contaminated you, from that. Like, it, it's, it was one of those things, like, I remember him being so stern about the warning, and then him passing away is like a surreal thing for me. Like, holy no, shit. No, that's. That's a real thing there, man. Like, like I've been twice now, and they call it the Namthrax. Because there's so many people there. And, like, you're shaking everybody's hand. You're doing this. You're doing that. It's just a, it's a real incubator for disease. So, like, I didn't fuck around. Like, I was the same way with him. Like, before I went, I supplement anyway. Like, I take black elderberry syrup every day. I'm fucking taking airborne every day. I've been doing that for months and months. Black elderberry syrup. It's, I swear by that <laughs> shit. It's fucking awesome. Nice. Fucking awesome. But, um, yeah, it's like the, the week before, I was super paranoid, too. I'm like, I can't. You got it because it's, like, it's crazy over there. And then when you get there, and the funniest thing was... When I was coming back from Nam, that's when China started locking down. That's when the news started spreading out that this was happening. They were starting temp checks and they were starting to close off cities. So I'm in LAX waiting to fly home. I'm like, I'm in the epicenter of Asian travel to the United States right now, going to the second biggest one, which is Newark fucking airport. I'm like, this like this is before anyone in America ever cared about the coronavirus, ever thought it was a thing. Like yeah. I'm sitting there, and I'm like, yeah, oh, it's uh, January, right? Yeah, it's the end of January. It's January 21st was my flight home. Via Not, fucking Nam. Yeah, and I'm sitting there with Carson. I'm like, I'm like, dude, I'm like, we're like right where everybody comes off of their planes if they're coming from fucking China. Like, yeah. it's like. Mm -hmm. Little did I know, uh, a month and a half later, what would be happening. Do you guys know your blood types? I believe mine is A. O, o positive, I want to say. 
You'd have to ask my mom. <laughs> yeah, I had to ask mine. I, I was like, I think I'm A. I don't I know. I heard, I heard the people with like O and uh, they, they're they less susceptible to it. Yeah. Right. Like B's or like, or no, I'm B. Good. That's what it was. I'm B. That's what my mom said. Yeah, was and A might be the most, I forget, but it was something yeah, like that. B, like, I am. Yeah, they, they, they were saying, no, that's what it is. But A. Get more guitar time in. You know, a lot of good new new good melodies and riffs and conceptions are coming out of it so that's always fun i, I can good. feel something really good brewing i don't good. know what it is yet but it's, it's gonna be nice cool jordan i'll have that for you in about a year <laughs> no that's good yeah i'm hoping to try and get there yeah because I i've been working the whole time i just started my vacation yesterday so um who knows i, am... I, I might have to take a vacation too by no man it's like, yeah, for me, it was it was just a, a it, was, it was a smart life decision to protect myself and my family. But, but like, I wanted, I, mean, I was working on some tracks before this started anyway, and uh, you know, obviously, I was working on stuff with you. I was working on stuff with Paul. Um, so it's like, yes, I want to try and uh, use the time that I have, because that's what I kept saying. I was like, I mean, that that was the weirdest thing about this. It was like, for me, it was like going into work every day is like a war. And then I look on social media and being like. The chicks at home. I'm on my fifth bottle of wine in quarantine. Ha, ha, ha. It's like, it's like what the fuck? I was like, Hashtag priorities. Yeah, but I was like, I'm not hating on them for that. I'm just talking about like no, the, they're allowed the, to. Uh, this, the the disparity between the the situations was very interesting. It was just like, wow, your reality is much different than my reality is. Yeah. And that that's the weirdest thing. Like I was telling Paul earlier before we started, I was like, this whole thing feels to me like a, a strange collective psychedelic experience in certain ways. Collective, like, yeah. yeah. Like, like we're all yeah. on the same trip. We're right? all on the yeah. same trip. And it's like, I'm learning stuff about myself. I'm learning stuff about other people. It's like, it's like, it's changing the way everybody does things. It's very challenging in certain ways, but it also could be, you could pull some good out of it, but it's also insanely terrifying. It's it's like all the hallmarks of a good psychedelic experience. Yeah. Like it's it's weird, but it's fucking real, man. Right, man. <laughs> well, I was talking to a friend um, just the other day, and she was saying that um, she thinks that you know because we have all these live online concerts like Fall Through and stuff like that. Yeah. Like maybe this experience is going to change the way that we experience art. It's going to change a lot of things, man. And sure. yeah, is there going to be, you think that like we're going to be talking about post COVID-19 where people are more in their houses and shit like that. And well, I think what I think maybe. Uh, maybe, but I also think it really will open up opportunities for people. Cause like, you know, if you, like, uh, uh, no, Brian, and you were, you've been seeing what Dave Lockhart's been doing, like, yeah. and some of these other people, Paul, you know, like, it's like, like I was joking before, I was like, I could just play drums for people. It'd probably be boring, but it's like, that's like <laughs> going to be something that could be a thing now. It's like, yeah, I, they I stream. See that, yeah, I mean, <laughs> if people want me to do, it, I'll do it. It's maybe maybe odd, like but... like my 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 feeds have been like an hour, an hour and a half. Like maybe yeah, not that but it's long like... of just drums, but like, you know, so like people little, little make like you know tricks. we make a livelihood of that. This you know it's like we, yeah. we you know it's one of our jobs, and it's like you yeah. know for people who use it as a source of income, you know this is really hurting them. So it's like, hello, right here. Um, but it's like, so it's like, you know, we were planning to release an album. You know, this is fucking up our fucking album. Release, we were right? this close this to close mastering. We yeah. Mas it, w the mixing is done. We were this close to sending it off for mastering. And, and then I called up uh, uh, Andy Van Det over in a, he's over in the Yonkers area or New Rochelle. I can't remember which. Uh -huh. And I was like, yeah, let's hold off, dude. Because I yeah. don't know if I'm going to be making money for the next few months <laughs> you know what i mean yeah so it's like i think and, and uh, one of one of the things uh we were i'm only gonna press physicals uh in vinyl format yeah that was the idea for the album so um when you cut a lacquer for vinyl it's very time sensitive so it's like i'm not gonna you know let it sit for, for a couple months because it'll happen. warp yeah, yeah it'll warp and the record will sound like shit it's like i'm not gonna yeah. let that happen um right. If we were doing just digital, maybe yeah, it wouldn't I, matter. I, yeah, yeah. We, bro, we, we lathe records, yeah. lathe records. It's the yeah, future. Yeah, we, that's we were talking about that, right? Yeah, Paul, yeah. Yeah, I I think lathe records are the the shit. I don't know. <laughs> Paul, do you yeah. think you've been more creative during this time of crisis? No, I I've been very creative in uh, 
working for the spy company trying to uh, continue to push b business forward with uh, video editing and all kinds of shit. I've been busy as fuck working on my actual day job. That's good. So Me too. It, I'm Which lucky is, you still have a, a good job. Absolutely. I, they I, I kind of their money in the beginning of the year, so so the company is solvent and all that. So, yeah, I've been working my ass off too. I've also felt kind of unsettled by this whole thing. Oh, me too. And if anything, it's been kind of cutting into my ability to like yes. concentrate and be creative in my own free time. Right here, man. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. It's, like that's it's clouding my mind, definitely. Right. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Yeah. It's yeah. kind of fucking me up right now. No, I feel you, man. Like so many people in my family, my best friend, you know, they're deep in, like my sister lives in Manhattan. Manhattan. She had right. someone in her building yeah, test yeah. positive. My sister uh, lives my, in Queens. Yeah. My so. best friend is in healthcare. <clears throat> you know, he's in, he's a CRNA. You know, he's intubating people for a job, the most dangerous job you could be fucking doing right now. So Jesus. it's like, yeah, so it's like my life is deep in this shit so it's like it's been just dealing with that it's been and then doing the stuff i was doing it was just taking up all of my life it right was like, so it's like i'm looking forward to actually being able to not worry about whether i'm going to catch a deadly virus every day you know it's just, just right. setting nice. foot out of the house yeah, yeah exactly right like, <laughs> and then it's like oh fuck am i gonna give it to someone even if i don't know i have it yeah it's like it's, yeah. it's, it's a horrible way to have to live yeah, it's like true paranoia because it's like no. you could not have symptoms and have yeah, to, uh, it's not even like, go like you really covered all the fucking bases. Didn't well, you, you could have already <laughs> had it and not even known too. That's yeah. the other thing is like yeah. you, you know, like for all we know, Jordan his blood is like the fucking cure for it, and we should converge <laughs> on him. That's it. Hand it over. Hey, yeah. listen, if it was, I'd give it out for free. It'd be like Mr. Salk, give it away. The government's going to strap you down to a table and start milking your blood. <laughs> Put Jordan's a tap in him. By... <laughs> Jordan's <laughs> blue by Friday. <laughs> I think I still have some. No, it's just, I just, I really hope we learn something from all this. What um, are you guys yeah. watching during, during the apocalypse? I've been, okay, so what's been getting me through is um because like i kind of like had to like i barely be going on social media because it's just too real too weird too fucked up but like i love i don't know if you guys ever heard of them i may have mentioned it. you ever heard of red letter media on youtube yeah okay so yeah. i love those guys they're about mostly film criticism they're pretty famous okay. youtube famous um they make they do like <laughs> review shows they do deep dive reviews on older movies they do reviews on newer movies uh they became famous for their uh, critiques of the Star Wars prequels, um, but they did, but they do it in character and like there's like a whole comedy aspect okay. to them. I can't recommend them highly enough. But um, I just been watching a, like now I'm probably gonna go to movies, but like during the whole thing I was like staying away from anything too much like that. Part of me is like, oh, I want to watch World War Z. I'm like, it's too real. I can't. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I'm like, I need funny <laughs> shit. So I've been watching yeah. a lot of funny shit. That's yeah, it's like being depressed and watching like Taxi Driver. Yeah, it's like, like but now it's like I'm, I'm <laughs> definitely going to be pulling out Children of Men. Like that's yeah. one of my favorite movies anyway. But it's like that's a movie I can watch now to kind of get into things, but also not make it too real. Yeah, and, uh, mostly comedy stuff for me has been getting me through. Yeah. That's usually my go-to is comedy. Um, I do like drama. Uh, I actually just saw. Um, Eyes Wide Shut the other day. Ah, oh, I love that film. <laughs> so good. Like, it, love that film. It's so fucking good. Like, it, I, I actually remember seeing little bits and pieces of it, like, when it first came out. I was probably, like, 12 years old. Yeah, yeah. And I, I just remember hearing, like, that piano piece by uh, Gregory Ligeti. I didn't yeah, know yeah, it, yeah. I, I didn't know it was Ligeti at the time, but it's, like, serial music, so it's only three notes the entire yeah, it's just, song. Yeah, three notes, back ba and forth, yeah. Na, 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 na. It's, like, this is really fucking creepy. I was like, I'm going to watch this film. Oh, that's great. Um, and I actually went back with, you know, the, the adult, you know, uh, knowledge. And, you know, I actually got the film. Sure, like, yeah. Oh, my God. This film is great. <laughs> like, there, there's bits and pieces of it where it's like, it's a little bit cruise-ish. You know, like. Tom, yeah, but that's Tom, him. Tom Cruise does the Tom Cruise thing, but yeah. he actually tones it down a lot. Now, that. yeah, I mean, that and you get to see Nicole Kidman great. naked. And, yeah, uh, I mean, that's always a plus. Yeah, I think, this is, I think this is a good time to tell everyone that me and Nicole Kidman are now uh, an item. No. Oh yes. 
<laughs> well, that was that was like right when she was getting a lot of uh, flack at that time because because Tom was you know he's the big, basically Scientology Jesus, but her that was right uh, before that right yeah but here's the thing her um, they were an item at the time mm-hmm. and her father it was a psychologist and psychology in Scientology is like akin to Hitler they believe like if you look at into Scientology. They think psychology is like, AKA concentration camps. They think they're, they're giving people drugs to ruin them. So like it was a big deal. That's why they eventually one of the reasons why they split up was because it was in the Scientology community, psychology, oh. like the whole institution of psychology is seen as basically like genocide. Jesus Christ. Yeah, <clears throat> I, I deep dive into cults. One of my big things is cults and like. Yeah. Uh, I, I I have books on all the major cults and like the Scientology is one of them. Uh, very crazy stuff going on in there. Yeah, because something like that can never happen again. Like something of that magnitude, in, well, at least in my opinion. Like now I, I don't think so. I think there'll be another one just like that. There really? always. You don't, you, you don't think people are wise to it at this point? Uh, no. I think it'll. I, I, they're wise to them, but they're to only them, wise to them okay. because of the draconian nature of the things they found out about them. Before people knew, they were just, oh, it's a self-help thing. It'll yeah. help you. It's cool. I, I know vegan people that are very cult-like in their in their oh, veganality, sure. and it's like almost psychotic. Like, oh well, I won't talk to non-vegans. Like, okay, asshole, then don't talk to me. Really? Uh, oh yeah, man, they can get. Oh my them. god, dude, I won't yeah, talk that. to them. Oh yeah, no, dude. Like, okay, for an example, there, there's a whole thing going around. I don't know if you've seen this, but like. Um, the, they're like, oh, if we if we lived in a world where we didn't eat meat, the coronavirus wouldn't exist. In like, really? this is how deep no they go. No one eats meat. Because, <laughs> like, no, it's like a friend of mine is a, is is a vegan, but he's a compassionate vegan. You know him, Ray. You, you Raymond, Ray. Yeah, 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 Irish. Okay, Ray. so he, but he's all about compassion. He's an animal lover, but like, yeah. he won't even like outwardly represent himself as a vegan, really. Because does he of work the... at the deli department? Yeah, he oh. does. That's the most interesting thing, too. <laughs> he works at a deli department cutting salami. Yeah, <laughs> but, like, he, he's about compassion. Like, he's all about compassion. He's one of my favorite people on earth. Um, but, like, he's all, but he's like, yeah, I don't even really feel comfortable, like, telling people I'm a vegan. Yeah. Like, because of the baggage that comes with the, the term vegan. And all you got to look at, like, listen to Joe Rogan, that, all the though. problems that they've given him and people like him. You know, it's just like it's it's a cult. You know, it's it's like it's it, it, if you're doing things for the right reasons, it's fine, okay. But it's like yeah. with any kind of belief system, you're going to get this whole over the top thing going on. It could be anything. It could be yeah. anything. Sure, yeah, that's be, why it'll yes. never be eradicated. Exactly. That's what I mean. It's like it's like it's like yeah, we we, we may not see one that's like that, but there'll be another one. But the cult There's mentality tons. will permeate through society. Sure. Well, it's just, it's, it's just the idea of a charismatic but, leader. But they have to be more subversive, um, I think, than like, hey, this is my philosophy, this is my religion, this is. They're not going to call it a cult. No. You know, they, they have to. They have to use avenues like this is a self. Thing. Yeah, this, this but, is a fitness thing. This is you know. Well, yeah, that's what they all can, do. Yeah. Right, but you can. It's like the, the cult. Uh, uh, what deems a cult? You know, the, the actual definition of one. Uh, if you look at the the, the criteria. What the tax write off? Yeah, well, yeah, but it's about okay having a it, 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 what constitutes a cult under the definition has to do with the idea of a hierarchical leadership structure with one person at the top. Um, uh, Lots of uh, directives that either separate people from their reality or majorly change their lives. Like there's certain criteria that constitutes like a cult. That's why I'm against the idea of presidents too. I don't think there should be a president. It has nothing to do with who happens to be the president now. I think the idea of a charismatic leader is fucking bad. I think that because cult it leads to cult mentality. Yeah, cult of personality. Yeah. Well, that's how you move people too. I think the problem is is people. Don't think with their head, and That's they have some sort of <laughs> self-esteem issues and some sort of hole that they need to fill. And then dead. somebody comes along yeah. and sells them. You know, it's the same fucking thing they use to make you buy a fucking Toyota or That's anything else. Yeah. They they pull on the heartstrings and they know exactly. how to I mean, motivate Jan, Jan soft-minded people. Confused. And there's always going to be soft-minded people. So yeah, it, that's that's what I mean. The idea of a charismatic leader. One of my favorite books. 
of all time. Is, I love the Dune series of books. Dune mm. and oh, making yeah. the movie with Denny Villeneuve. It's gonna be awesome. It looks but, good. Uh, yeah, it's They're gonna be cool. That? I, oh yeah, dude. It's gonna. Be it looks much awesome. better. Dude, I'm, I'm I, so I, mean, I, I love the David Lynch <laughs> Dune. I really do. I love it. I, but, and I, but I, you like the one with Sting, man? Oh, yeah, man. I love it. I love that shit. It's fucking so ridiculous. Where he pulls out the guy's nipples and he yeah, floats dude. around the room. Oh, yeah. No, it's, it's, it's David Lynch. And he took his name off it. I don't know if you know that. No, I didn't. Yeah, it's okay, Alan so, Smithy. Alan Smithy, yes. You know what I'm talking about. So, uh, yeah, so he took his name off it. He used a just, pseudonym for it? Yeah, well, no. It, it was really, like, if you look at the, uh, the, the film now, it, uh, on the credits, it says mm -hmm. uh, directed by Alan Smithy. Yeah, he, he disowned the film. Wow. So, like, Alan Smithy is like this a pseudonym that directors use who want to remove their name. From oh, the films. okay. Kind of like Klondike, like when well, like when you see like old yeah. films when they say like a phone number says Klondike. It's like yeah. that was never a thing. Yeah. It's it's just like what they. <laughs> it's supposed to be a fake thing. It's like Klondike six four seven two. Yeah, really cool. but like uh, it, the the fourth book in the Dune series is called God Emperor of Dune, and the whole idea behind that book is uh, it's Paul's uh, children's children, and he grows up to be it's the idea of the benevolent dictator, and how um, you know he the idea it deals with like a godly personality. So the idea so if you knew everything that was going to happen, mm -hmm. life would be boring for you because you know everything that's going to happen. So like like the major plot point in this book is like he believes that he can find the only way to save humanity. He's the only way to he sees all possible futures and he sees there's only one way that human beings can get out of this alive. And so he minimizes space travel. He makes people live a very structured life. He's he's technically a dictator, but it's a benevolent dictator. And like the whole theme of that whole series is the idea that a um, charismatic leader always leads to bad things. The same thing with Paul in the first book, okay? So Paul Maudib, you know, he becomes like he's supposed to be the savior and he builds up this whole thing, he overthrows the Padishah Emperor, returns power to Dune, helps the Fremen, but then at the end of that book, he starts a war that kills millions of people. So it's like he may have done some good things at the beginning, but he ends up starting a jihad that kills millions of people throughout the galaxy in his name so it's like it's like i've become obsessed with that whole idea of just the idea of a charismatic leader it's never a good idea for anything i wish more people believe that yeah that's what i mean it's like think about if we didn't have this whole popularity contest between 80 year olds you know it's like what if we had a more parliamentary based system where the smartest people on each of these ideas got together and worked it out why do Man, we have to have this one dude? And there was like dude? several different parties rather than just yeah, bi well, I mean, bicameral. Right, but it know. also fosters more uh, working together because you have to. You have to form a coalition. You see this in Britain. You see this in Israel. The parliamentary-based system encourages reaching over party lines and having to form a coalition. Yeah, you that's why it'll never you... happen. Because it'll, exactly. it'll destroy the parties that, that they want so much. It's a, so a hands-across-the-water type yeah, yeah, like no, just, no one's ever gonna fully get along. No, industry and, doesn't want that. They don't no, want you know. We could vote directly, you know, for things now. I don't think we need. We have everyone has the internet, but well, that's, uh, that, see, that's the interesting thing. I've been thinking about this whole Corona thing because it's like, if thing is like you've already seen, like they kept the primaries going, which I thought was fucking fucked up. Then Florida. Yes. And I can't remember what other state. People were risking their health to go out to fucking press a button. Couldn't they do that from fucking home? Like, they do right. everything else online. That's what I mean. Yeah. You, should like, be able to, you should be able to vote online, yeah. And, yeah. like, it'll be really interesting to see how this thing affects the election. In but terms then that of, app is going to fuck up. And then it's but, like, like just the, you know, yeah, but look at what happened <laughs> with the primaries in Iowa. Like, the fucking app made that whole thing invalid. It crashed, and the whole thing was basically a farce. Like, yeah, who cares who won? It's like, this person said they won, this person said they won. It didn't matter. It's all, oh, we should probably redo it. That's because an app failed. So it's mm -hmm. like, in certain ways, yeah, you have to have a critical infrastructure. Yeah, I don't but, fully trust it, but I... <laughs> no, but I mean, think about 2000, the hanging Chad incidents and stuff like yep. that. Even hanging with the paper Chad. ballots, you're not immune to these kind of irregularities. No, so of it's like not. There's clerical it, errors all the time. So it's, it'll be really interesting to see how this affects the actual process of doing politics. 
and like you know obviously it won't be a uh, change but it, 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 like i said so much it'll be it'll be interesting to see how things change because of that yeah it's gonna be a fucking uh, quite a quite a shift i think in the next couple of years this is going to change things immeasurably yeah i just really yeah. hope people learn things from this right, that's my biggest hope is that like it, i've been telling people this because like uh, from like a lot of people that i was surrounded with like in the lead up to this like didn't think it was going to be a thing i was kind of like the prophet of doom at work i was like no you people got to get ready because this thing is going to be bad and like they're just like you're crazy you're crazy i'm like no well I'm not yes crazy. but <laughs> yeah exactly yeah i am but it's like but the thing is it's like it, it, one thing you got to consider is this it's like if this thing had the mortality rate of something like ebola millions of fucking people would be dead yeah. like this is just a dress rehearsal. E evolution is a motherfucker. This proves it. This thing is. That's why it's so different. It's Dude, we're not even. We're not even at the peak yet, man. Dude, uh, a okay, lot of I people mean, could die. I mean, yeah, and the thing is, I can't get into it. But like, the people that I know that are working in the healthcare system, they're saying that you know, you think these people know have a handle on things. Don't be so sure, because this thing is too new. We don't know much about it. And like the things that we felt we know yesterday might change. And it's like, like you were saying, it's like, oh, I heard this blood is good for, her. I heard this blood is bad for, her. but this guy had the mild case. Right. This guy I, didn't, I didn't hear anything die. about blood type. Yeah. Yeah. So it's like I just evolution. It was, uh... oh, like you know, like Jeff Goldblum always said, life finds a way. Life uh, is... finds a way. <laughs> and so it's like, nice. I really hope we pay attention. And to say, yeah, we got pretty lucky right now that it's not that mortality rate is something like 15 percent, you know, yeah. because like that that shit could be in the pipeline. So it's like I really hope we learn something out of this because we could save a lot of people's lives. Yeah. And don't be a dickhead to supermarket workers. Well, just don't be a dickhead. Like just just like, yeah, it's ugh, what a fucked up thing. I, I, I've seen a few instances of people not being so kind to the. To the grocery store worker and it's yeah like, we got lucky uh, we got lucky at my store there was a, a, there was a few fights i heard i didn't witness them but they, uh, there's fights that happen on a regular day too very they little incidents that. yeah that i that i saw that i heard about but it's like i saw videos of all over the world like especially in australia i noticed in england a lot of people just going crazy this. But it's my like, yeah my favorite thing from watching around the world is india and how they oh, enforce yeah. the curfew at night? Yeah, they're Boy, done. They're just, do they they're not take fuck. any shit? They just smack the fucking shit out of the people that are out on the street with a big long bamboo stick or something like whap, whap, and the guy like is trying to drive his motorcycle away and he falls. Ah, oh, it's yeah, gold. It's... <laughs> yeah, they're That's fucking the weird relentless. Thing about this too, it's like it's like the, the weird thing about it is it's like the authoritarian nature of some of the nature of the stuff we're doing is actually probably going to save a bunch of people's lives like it i've been is. reading a lot from nicholas christakis he's a, a a really good epidemiology virologist dude and he just went into the ideas and i had friends in china um and i've been talking to them and just the ideas of how they locked down that country was absolutely fascinating like yeah. there's like okay you cannot leave one person from your household can go out once a week to get things you have a special id card for this person and they can go they're standing in line six feet apart. Every building you went in, every train you went in, everywhere you went, you were temperature checked. Okay? Mm. Everywhere. Then, okay, so then if you had a temperature, they immediately moved you to something called a fever clinic, which they set up during SARS. And they were using these during the SARS outbreak, what is that, four years ago. Then they did major tests. Okay, they tested you there for flu. They tested your antibodies to see if you had pneumonia. Then they had portable CT scanners, and they ran these people through portable CT scanners and made them wait there to see what their results were. And, and then if they were, uh, tested positive, they were immediately moved away from their families to somewhere else because that was the big problem in China. There's a, a lot of uh, family transmission. So, like, these people got this thing. They built the hospital in two fucking days, bro. I a believe major that. major hospital. Like, I believe you, it. You can see video of it. Like, think about something like that trying to be done in this country. No way. No, never. Like the, the the efficiency of that place was like 
in the ways they handled it was like something to behold. Now, you know, they're obviously corrupt and they definitely are lying about a lot of things. And, There's you know, that. But it's like, it's, <laughs> it, it, it shows you how like no, authoritarianism can actually save people's lives when it comes to a global pandemic, which makes this well, thing wait so a minute. fucking strange. Wait a minute. Are you sure that's because of authoritarianism? Because I feel like Chinese culture, they kind of listen to their leaders. No, you're correct. We're in America, they are we're collectivist much more, culture. Okay, we're we're much more true. like rebellious. Like you got absolutely. people going down to Florida on fucking absolutely. spring break. What? I heard stories of people playing basketball <laughs> in the Bronx <laughs> and shit like that. Like, I, I think it has oh, more no. to do with the communal uh, sense of their culture rather it's than yeah, the fact sure. that they're authoritarian assholes. Yeah, no, I think it's a mixture of both for sure. And that, that was the thing that really worried me at the beginning of this because I was like, I'm more, at the beginning, I was more worried about the people doing something bad to me. Mm-hmm. Like, right. not the virus. I was like, people, like, this is a country full of crazy people with lots of guns. <laughs> and if you tell them they can't do things they like to do, they're going to do them anyway. Yeah. It's like that. I heard gun sales have gone up, by oh, the they, way. I, yeah, they did, for sure. Absolutely. So it's like, that's the thing. You're, you're absolutely correct. It's like, that's why I think it's been harder here, because it's like, you know, what do you mean they're telling me I can't go to my favorite restaurant? What do you mean I can't just get in my car and drive to Florida? <laughs> you know, that's what America's about, isn't it? Yeah, well, know? I mean, I, I like buffalo wings as much as the next guy, but... Uh... <laughs> Something tells me I'm not going to get any for uh, <laughs> quite some time. <laughs> get them delivered, brother. Yeah, exactly. That's, it's, oh, that's spicy garlic? Really? Uh, <laughs> I wonder if Jimmy G's delivers an outreach. They probably. That's the interesting thing, too, is just seeing all these businesses adapt to this new environment. I read this whole thing exactly. Jeff Bezos put up the other day, just talking about how Amazon was adapting. But yeah. it's like... Well, they shut down for a little bit, didn't they? They did, but, like, it, 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 but they were just like, okay, this is what we're doing. I mean, even like... Like you're saying, local places. Like you know, it's like these yeah. places. It's like, yeah, like grasshopper. Like, or yeah, going to curbside. You know, it's like it's interesting yeah. to see how we're in a place now where we can do those things. Like even what we're doing right now. It's like, yeah. it's, it's like it's crazy. It's an amazing power of technology where it's like. But like, you know, how does the, how does the guy like get it into his car and then like get it? Into, like, does he have like a space suit on? Like. Who knows, man? Like I said, I've seen. Like, <laughs> like, I've seen like, taken even. Locally, yeah, man. Like I get, better. I get takeout now exclusively from the strip joint because the strippers deliver it. Uber uh, Eats. Yeah. I'm not allowed to give them the, the tips, but Take out I. Fish dinner. I did give them yeah. hepatitis. <laughs> <laughs> you guys well, that's have a real thing, though. Do you guys have like an asshole or a hero of the week? Ooh. Asshole I have both. Um, okay. I think my uh, my hero of the week is Dr. Fauci because he's fucking sticking yeah. it to Trump yeah, and telling it like man. it is. And uh, he's in a position where he can do that and uh, hopefully he's not going to get fired well, by this dumb administration guy. who said it was a hoax and then waited before he got all this stuff together. Yeah, he's but in any case, dude. and uh, my asshole of the week are, um, are the Republican senators who are holding up the relief bill because they don't like the fact that they were going to give people on unemployment an extra 600 bucks a head. Which I Welcome. think people deserve. Fucking give people money. Get the money to the people. Andrew Yang doesn't look so crazy now, does he? That's yeah. right. Yeah. What about you guys? Like Andrew Yang. Uh, I, guess my, I, I guess I'll just have a hero of the week. My, my hero of the week is my best friend Adam. He's a healthcare worker. He's putting his ass on the line and trying to help some people, so he's my hero of the week for sure. Nice, nice. nice. Uh, I would say, um, okay, for for hero, I would say I would say the people working the essential businesses, such as the, the grocery stores, the medical, um, the medical workers, and you know, uh, fire protection, all that stuff. Uh, pretty much all the people we sell to at my day job. And uh, assholes of the week. Anyone that's causing panic when when there doesn't need to be. I mean, obviously there there's a lot to be concerned about, but there's people. There's a certain breed of douchebag out there that just cause that just exponentially causes more panic by uh, ra- raising a lot more fear. Um, 
Like, like the I, people I, that get pulled over and say, oh, I have coronavirus, and then they don't. Yeah, and, and they cough on the cop. Yeah, cough right. on the cop. Yeah, yeah, yeah there, there's there's that sort <laughs> of um, using a shitty situation to bad advantage. Yeah. The price gougers. Yes, the yep. price gougers. The, the money yep. changers. The money changers. <laughs> the lenders of the temple. In biblical yeah. terms. Yeah. <laughs> the money <laughs> lenders. The price come and whip you and kick the, you out. The, mm-hmm. the, alar- the alarmists that are causing too much panic. Too much alarm. That's what Fuckers. I would say is the assholes of the week. All right. And my you, Paul? My assholes of the week, or my asshole of the week, is just the the people that are uh, that are basically just out there that don't need to be. Like, just stay home. You know, you don't yeah. need to. You don't need to go anywhere. Just fucking. If you gotta go somewhere, go somewhere and get the fuck home. If not, just stay home. Don't fuck yeah. around. It's not worth it. No, nah, man. I'm putting uh, people's lives at risk. Stay the and fuck you, home. You guys are my heroes of the week for, for making the show happen, despite uh, Mother Nature's best efforts. I love you guys. And, uh, love you and too, all, the, all the listeners out there, too, man. You know, everybody stay safe. Wash your hands. Wash your ass. All that bullshit. <laughs> all the stuff you normally do, you know. Yeah, just do <laughs> See, it. Here's, just my do it thing. here's my thing about washing hands. You should wash your hands. Uh, but you should not wash your hands too much, and here's why. Because when you wash your hands too much with hot water and soap, they become dry. Mm. And when your skin becomes dry, it starts to crack. Oh. And when your skin cracks, guess what you're susceptible to? Yep. Germs. That's right. Yo, you gotta <laughs> be using the Neutrogena. <laughs> yeah, boy. Neutrogena Pond's pore strips. Here we go. <laughs> No, that's that's how I always knew my dad was gay because he always had Neutrogena. <laughs> See, I knew mine was gay because he said my dick tasted good. <laughs> I think on that note, we're gonna get out of here, guys. Love you. Be good, love you guys. Cool. Love Have you, a man. good night. It's it's cool. been a pleasure. Great talking to you guys. Thanks for having Be me. Be well. <laughs>